Today I show you how to easily get started with Radare 2. For this we use a task from Google CTF 2018 and open the binary with the right permissions. If you like the video give me a thumbs up, leave a comment and tell your friends. Welcome to the Radare 2 command line. To understand R2 better I will introduce some concepts first. R2 has a seeker which points to the virtual memory address shown inside the square brackets. Without giving an extra destination, commands will use this address. The integrated general help of all possible commands is obtained by the question mark command. To get the special help text and further help for a specific command, simply append question mark to the command. As you can see, unlike most operating system terminals, the commands are extremely puritanical. Most, however, are shortcuts to the associated actions to be performed. So, do not be surprised about a command like WTF exclamation mark a file. Evil to him who evil things. Because it writes only in the file a file starting from the current address until the end of the map memory. This circumstance dramatically speeds up the analysis process, but also makes getting started hard and even harder to master. You can switch to visual mode with the command capital V and return to the command line mode by pressing Q. In visual mode you can scroll whim-like with the keys K up and J down, as well as open a command line with colon at the bottom of the screen, enter commands and confirm with enter. In addition, you can scroll up and down faster with shift K and shift J. While scrolling up and down the search pointer is updated to the address displayed at the top. There are five different display modes which we can change with P and shift P. In the topmost row, right of the current seeker address, the current mode is displayed. Hexadecimal mode is the built-in hex editor. In assembler mode, all machine instructions are translated into assembler. The debug mode also shows the stack in the upper third and the registers in the middle. In VGA mode, each byte value is assigned to a color value from 0 black to hex EC pink to hex FF white. The ASCII mode displays each ASCII character or for not printable, if out of range, the actual hexadecimal value in the form backslash X and so on. In order to reconstruct assembler code into a high level language, I usually work in debug mode. For the structural analysis, we additionally look at the control flow graphically and have to analyze the function main. For example, with the command af at main, since the seeker is already directed to the first byte of main, we can also press the key combination df. By pressing v, we can now look at the structure of the source code using the simple ASCII graph. We move the view window on the graph by 5 characters to the left by pressing H, right by L, up by K and down by J. With additionally shift key the character size increases fivefold. As usual, minus enlarges the image section plus decreases it and zero sets it back to baseline. Here too we can simply display the integrated help by pressing question mark and move the view with J down and with K up. To leave the help we press Q twice. P and Shift P again rotate through five different views. The second shows additionally the addresses and opcodes in the first column. The third represents only the code blocks as nodes having the smallest two bytes of the starting address as names. These nodes are connected by different edges according to the control flow. The content of the block marked with six add characters is shown in detail on the left. To highlight text we press slash, type for example rbp and conform with enter. 
If no highlighted text should be displayed, we press slash and confirm the dialog with enter. To look at 8 bytes starting at the address hex DE0 as hex stump, we use the command P like print, X like hexadecimal, additionally pass the number of bytes and write at in front of the starting address hex DE0. How can we now overwrite the values from this address with an arbitrarily long null terminated string? With W as write and Z as zero terminated, the actual string and at in front of the starting address. But we can also overwrite values with assembler commands by typing W as write and A like assembler, followed by the actual instruction move AD0 and at plus the starting address hex A24. Or we can overwrite the command where the seeker actually is in visual mode interactively with shift A. Attention! If the instruction is longer than the source instruction, the following will also be overwritten according to the required size. If the instruction is shorter than the source instruction, the non-overwritten portions of the source instructions are preserved. We have to take care of the unneeded parts of the original machine commands and therefore add to knob separated by a semicolon. To debug a file, we pass the slash D option at start. Within Radaudi 2, we can also use the command OOD or its alias DOO followed by the arguments. If we want to interrupt the program at the address sim.main plus offset hex 1a0, we use the command D like debug and B breakpoint followed by the address. In visual mode, press S or F7 to execute the next command. We can do that on the command line with D, debug and S, step. Or rerun the program until the next breakpoint by pressing F9 or typing the command DC. To change register values for the current state of the machine, we use the command D like debug and R like registers, followed by the register name. The assignment operator equal and the new value hex1234 ABCD. There's one more thing worth mentioning. At first I outsourced a lot of tasks in an external Python console or wrote my own script. This is often unnecessary most of those things are even possible in Rodaudi itself. We can execute any external commands such as Python on the Rodaudi 2 console with a prefixed exclamation mark. Having your own Sage or SH console is also no problem. For calculations we use the command question mark followed by the equation and get the result in 12 different display options and may filter not only this output with tilde, followed by the search string. Often, however, we only need the hexadecimal or the decimal representation. The video can and should only give a brief insight into Radaudi 2. Often, Radaudi 2 offers different solutions. Also, not to be dismissed, is the sheer number of commands whose syntax may change over the time. Nevertheless, it's no longer a young tool and more than mature. And yet, it is still under constant development as the recent upgrades around the graphical front-end cutter show. See you soon for more basic videos. Believe me, it will be scary. See you later.